Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Um, today's project is going to be a little bit different for me. I don't normally dive into transmission type work. It is far outside of my realm of expertise. is like a preferred order of uh, pulling the bolts um, you know to help things from getting too messy So this is my stand-in shot for the uh, post pan removal. My uh, camera, of course, decided to shut down prior to uh, draining everything out. So I guess um, you've only got me to say that um, everything was uneventful as far as the drainage. Luckily, the um, order of uh, bolt removal that I chose uh, ended up, you know, helping me control the um, all the fluid when I uh, dropped the pan. And uh, the biggest takeaway from um, dropping that pan was that that uh, aftmost row of bolts are the worst because uh, you've got that exhaust crossover that happens there. And specifically, there was one on the corner that um, was near a um, the heat shield and uh, it was a monster to take off. If I had to do over again, I'd try to get myself a set of uh, low profile uh, sockets and uh, ratchet for that particular application. Nothing really fit in there very well and um, it took a fair amount of time to get in there and get that dude removed. But the, um, the forward most corner bolts were left in place and slowly um, opened up in order to kind of control how that pan was opening up and the speed in which it was draining. So once the transmission filter is removed, you're going to be looking at the valve body. The uh, valve body has got a uh, two different types of bolts, but they look a lot the same. The profile is just slightly different. The um, You've got a set of bolts that hold the valve body up into the transmission housing. Those are a little bit larger. The, the thickness of those is a little bit thicker. They require a uh, Torx 30 um, to get them off. And then uh, later on, when you remove the lead frame from the valve body, you'll be looking for a uh, Torx 27 in order to um, take those particular bolts off. There's uh, six of those that uh, hold on to the lead frame. I would remove, you know, like 10 of the ones that hold the valve body into the housing. And then I would leave like one. And I've left this one right here. It's pretty much like toward in the center. And um, I'll pull that one last, of course, and uh, control the valve body on the way down. But, uh, it's all ready to drop. I've got the, um, the uh, Canon um, electrical plug, basically, that's up uh, toward the top. Let me see if you can see it. That that round area right there, that's where the, um, the uh, 
sensor. That's where the, the power goes into the unit. You see I've got it somewhere here. There we go. So I've got that disconnected. And, uh, and also with that, I removed the sleeve. Um, the sleeve the sleeve right here is like uh, it, it goes in and, and bridges the gap between the housing and the, um, the valve body. So to pull this sleeve out, it talks about a special tool. I didn't have to have a special tool. I just used a set of needle nose pliers and pulled it straight out. The one thing that you do have to do before you pull this sleeve is uh, you got to pull down on basically a guillotine a guillotine sort of deal but right here this uh, this has got to be uh, squeezed and pulled straight down in order to release that sleeve I got my um, valve body dropped from the truck and I'm um, about ready to pull the uh, lead frame off and um, discussion points on this um, on this lead frame evidently uh, this is the uh, input sensor this is the output sensor and um, the output sensor is what was giving me um, my uh, my code um, of uh, PO2 actually correction PO720 was the code this is uh, this is the top side of the unit. These sleeves, I didn't think that these sleeves were going to drop with the um, valve body. Let's leave them on there, maybe. We'll see. I've got uh, six more bolts to remove on this other side. I'm gonna flip it here in a minute. This uh, bridge um, connector, this was the, the part that I'd mentioned that uh, you want to inspect I guess it's prone to cracking and it looks like mine's in pretty decent shape a little brake clean here do a little inspection Got some rubber gaskets here that appear to be in decent shape. The uh, the inside pan, you know, if it's any indication, the inside pan is was very clean. The inside of the transmission is very clean. Um, I have not cleaned the uh, magnet yet. The um, valve body um, it came out. It, it's relatively heavy, so be prepared when you drop that uh, last bolt. Just have your have yourself ready to assume the weight um, so you don't end up injuring something that you didn't want to injure um, again this is the um, that uh, guillotine that uh, gets pulled that releases uh, the sleeve um, that uh, provides the uh, the connection between the uh, outer case and the lead frame so I went ahead and bought a new one of these. Uh, I probably didn't need to. I probably could have cleaned this up, um, but evidently these are susceptible to being leakers. And I thought, you know, since I was gonna save a little money on doing my own repair, I might as well just not scrimp on the parts. So I went ahead and I replaced this and I'll uh, put prices and um, item numbers down in the description below that you can reference to. You might be able to make this job even cheaper than what I did. The um, the gasket you can uh, you can reuse the gasket. They say I bought a replacement gasket, and um, you know I probably didn't need to. So the shop estimated this job to be a a three hour, and. Um, at first I thought, oh man, that's, that's way too much time. But, uh, you know, where I sit at right now, 
I might have three hours in on it right now, but you know, my time's not worth much. You know, they've almost engineered the, um, the shade tree mechanic out of the process. You know, these uh, sensors that I'm messing with right now, there was a time when that sensor was located on the outside of the unit and you could just go right in there and go underneath your vehicle and pull them and replace them and everything was good. You could check your transmission level from inside the engine compartment, you know, with the dipstick. Well, with 2013 and others, they've gotten rid of the transmission dipstick and they've placed the, um, there is a, uh, a small little dipstick you got to get underneath your vehicle and you've got to remove um, this um, you know unassuming bolt looking thing in order to get access to that dipstick you know it's almost like it's hidden um, and you know that's a ploy to get you in the shop um, to where you know you just put your hands up and you're like guys it's beyond me but that was one of my big motivations behind this video in addition to saving, you know, 500 bucks, I wanted to kind of reinforce the fact that, you know, if you slow down a little bit, think about it, get on YouTube, you know, it's got great information and hopefully this is going to be considered decent information, you know, when I get it done. But there's a lot that you still can do. Don't let yourself be led down the path of, uh, you can't handle it, it's beyond your skill level or whatever, because really, unless you, unless you give things a shot, here you know once in a while you you don't know what you can do until you do it so we'll see we'll see all this may be completely a moot point um, if my truck doesn't start and go into gear when I put it all back together and I'll scrap this video and there will be no evidence that it ever happened so I'm ready to go ahead and drop this assembly on the valve body after I flip it the right side. The, um, while I'm doing this, it may be important to mention that, uh, so I had a, um, a fault code of uh, PO720, and that was for the output speed sensor. There's also another closely associated code and I believe it's also related to the um, output speed sensor. It's a uh, PO722. And um, so, you know, changing out this lead frame would go toward, you know, resolution of either one of those codes. There may be some other. Um, fault code possibilities that could generate out of this uh, lead frame. My point is is that when you go researching fault codes and uh, you might find other component fault code generators out of this one item. So just because I found you know 720 was mine, PL 720, there could be others. So this uh, repair procedure, this, this, uh, this process here that I'm going in it could apply to other things, so just uh, pull up YouTube, and you too can be a uh, a wannabe transmission man. So I've got that detent placed where it's supposed to be. It appears that I've got the entire lead frame seated where it needs to be. Got my foam strip in place. I'm ready to flip this thing upside down and start running in the uh, screws this time. I have got something special that I didn't anticipate having. I didn't have, well, I currently do not have a inch pound torque wrench but I do have a buddy that's much more better equipped in the realm of torque wrenches than I and this guy just so happens to have three different types of snap-on torque wrenches 
he's got a problem. It, actually, it's a good problem. It's a good problem in my case because he was able to loan them out to me and I am happy to borrow them. I appreciate being able to borrow them. But um, I'm going to be able to talk about them just a little bit. If you haven't got a, um, an inch pound torque wrench yet and you're shopping and you're looking at the different types or whatever, you know, it's very rare that you get to, you know, try out three different types. And um, the only thing that I'm missing here is maybe a digital representation. I don't have a digital one. So these are hard times, you know, no digital. So this one right here, um, I wish I had the model number visible here. Oh, here we go. I might be able to read it. This is a, uh, get my eyeballs here. QD1R200. So this is like a standard torque wrench, standard click type setting. Um, it clicks and tells you when you've achieved what you got dialed in. So I'm going to try that and see how I like it compared to what I'm doing here. And then this other kind here, this type, it looks a lot the same. It's a little bit of a smaller profile. And I asked him, I said, what is, what's the indicator here? Does it, does it, uh, you know give you an audible you know like a tick or a click or whatnot and he said no it's the uh, the head breaks free so you're torquing torquing you get to your point and then it just lets go and just kind of just free spins you know it doesn't catch anymore i wish i knew you know like what the rough wag name is on this one but i don't um let me see i'm looking for a model number here we go. It is Quebec Joker QJ117 Charlie. QJ117 Charlie, that's this type right here. So uh, I'm gonna give that one a shot. And then you got this one right here, it's, it's purdy. It's never been used. This is the maiden voyage for this one. And uh, this one, you, uh, so it's got, it's got a red indicator that reacts to the tension that you apply on it. And then you set the silver one, you set the silver one to, um, where, well that was wrong. Let me see here. Index it at zero. Okay, this, okay so now I've, I've re-indexed it, it's at zero, and I'm going, 53 inch pounds so the top gray indicator so I've got them all set and I've got to run these in and I think I'm ready to run them in Got my 27 Torx ready. Yeah, I mentioned before, these are the ones that I have used a little bit. So I'm going to be very ginger with these two. Okay, so 
Now to try out these fancy torque wrenches. Like I said, I've got this set right now. Should be set and ready to go. This is the uh, the more traditional one. drive so does this one right here so I'm going to now this is supposed to just kind of click and free spin and I re didn't give me the feedback that I was expecting. I, I'm, I'm, I'm almost where I don't trust any of them. You can tell. You can tell, I bet. So this one right here is going to let me know what's happening because it's going to show me the tension that I'm generating. This might be the answer that I'm looking for in my, in my current state of concern. Cause I want to see, I want to see myself get there. So I'm there and I just push the needle. I like that feedback, especially because I'm scared with those two right there. I like being able to see when I got to my point, it actually pushed that needle a little bit. So I got it just a little bit maybe two pounds um, heavier than what I should have but I didn't know what to anticipate so maybe I'll sneak up to it a little bit better this time okay this one is at it so this one right here I had done with uh, this other torque wrench a minute ago and I told you I didn't like the feedback that I got on it I didn't really trust it I believe I achieved it, but I just didn't feel good about it. So anyway, I think I'm there, there. Let me get myself back to where I'm pushing that set point needle every once in a while. So I got to readjust it back. This is one of the ones that I had damaged or previously. Okay. And so now I, I've got it torqued down to spec and nothing popped or cracked. So I'm thinking that we're good. Now this is the other one that I kind of didn't treat very nice earlier. Let's see where I'm at here. little bit over that one. Probably, probably about three three inch pounds more on that one than I what I should have. And then let me see I had this one with the other one. So I'm kind of digging this big dial. It's my only issue with this big dial is that it was kind of hard to read. I would say probably with routine use you get you know you get more comfortable with it you just I didn't know what the increments values were when I was originally setting it so that was kind of confusing There we go. 
this one's the winner in my book. So as you can tell, I had a few issues getting that valve body back up and into position. Um, the biggest one was uh, that thermal bypass valve. It's uh, You can see it in the frame, and uh, I put an arrow on it right there identifying it. That thermal bypass valve likes to either A, drop out while you're um, initially removing the valve body, or uh, B, it'll drop down like that and just kind of hang in that position. And one, they want you to take it out and inspect it, make sure, you know, there's no obvious issues with it. Um, but uh, as far as reinstalling the valve body, that thing has got to be in a uh, up position. It's got to be up in that transmission case. And the only way to get it to hold itself up there is basically through suction. And uh, the job guide recommends that you get Vaseline and, uh, you know, smear it all around the outside of that uh, thermal bypass valve, shove it up there in the hole, and then better be quick because it wants to start dropping out. And as soon as it drops out, then you've got a problem. you got to drop the valve body again. And anyway, it's a big pain. So anyway, lube her up with Vaseline, shove it up in there, get that valve body into position, and you're ready to go. Um, another problem I had was that there is a, a couple of black center transmission um, feed tubes that um, for some reason stuck on to the valve body, and I thought that that was the position they were supposed to be in, and I was going to leave them in that position for the install, but it ended up getting in my way as well so I had to remove those and then uh, shove those up into their respective um, ports in the transmission housing and once I got those two things up in there and the thermal bypass valve once it got in place then I was able to go ahead and get the rest of the valve body up there and it was no big deal but uh, it was uh, aggravating for a while I can assure you okay so here we go we're gonna button her up I've had a significant delay well about a day because I couldn't figure out how to get this is the old let me see here here we go this is the old sleeve for okay you see that little that little nub inside there that little nub I didn't see it in the job guide, but when you slide the sleeve inside the uh, transmission case housing, there's a slot that allows that groove to slip in through, and then that allows this thing to be pushed in fully to where you can push that guillotine up and it hold it in place. And I didn't realize that there was that little nubbin and so I thought there was something wrong with my fitting. Um, I thought I might need to tap on it a little bit but then I was worried about breaking it. And anyway, on a day later after a little bit of sleep and a little bit of thought, I saw what I needed to see and I was able to get it in. It was like bam, no problem.
place, it was time for me to go ahead and add my transmission fluid. Mercon LV, um, you got to buy it through Ford. It was uh, the recommended fluid for my transmission. So anyway, one thing about putting the transmission fluid back in the vehicle, since there is no transmission tube in the engine bay, it uh, made getting the fluid in there kind of a challenge. I bought a, uh, a cheapy uh, pump in order to uh, do that, but then it was still going to be kind of an upside down on your back kind of thing. So I went ahead and uh, used a, uh, a cheap flexible funnel and uh, rigged it up to a, um, a tube and uh, run it straight down through the um, engine compartment into the port and was able to get my fluid in that way and um, it didn't make a mess everything was um, straight up worked well the um, I did go ahead and stop at like five quarts um, initially and um, then I started my truck up and let it run and let that uh, transmission pump you know suck that new fluid into the transmission so I could go ahead and finish it up and um, if I remember right it uh, takes like a seven and a half of those um, containers to uh, fill it up to capacity so anyway just be advised of what your uh, capacity is and um, you know top her off appropriately but everything worked out fine got her filled up and uh, test drove it and life was good hey so I ended up uh, getting her all done I'm very happy that I got her done um, those pan bolts man those things are well, one row of them, big pain in the ass. But um, when it's all said and done, I'm uh, very happy that um, I went ahead and I made myself do this job. Uh, I ended up saving just shy of $500. The uh, parts came out to 330 bucks, 320 bucks, and um, so that's. 498 bucks in my pocket so two days two and a half days worth of aggravation but um, if I was to do it again or you know another you know sort of project I think you know I'd be able to make my time a little bit better but so you know hopefully take something away from this um, maybe uh, think about giving that next project a shot I don't know but um, like I said before, uh, thanks for checking out the channel. Um, I'm going to try to edit this down to where it doesn't take all day to watch it. And I um, hope you enjoyed it. So, I will promise to get back on that Model A. That will be coming next. Take it easy and thanks for being here.